Gonzalez and welcome to another episode of Making Sense. And today I have the privilege of bringing back a guest that was on one of my shows in, in the previous year and he's, he's a good old standby from, uh, not, not old in age, but a good old standby for many of our shows here at the El Paso Community College TV station and events that are being held here at, uh, at our school. And Ray Vigil, Welcome and thank you for taking time. I know you always make time to to help the college out and, and whether it's in senior events or it's in other shows and and being the public affairs spokesperson for uh, Social Security. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, so, you know, let's let's talk a little bit uh, on the last show uh, that we had. We talked a little bit about Social Security, but I want to focus on Medicare. Okay. And um, a lot of people have misconceptions about Medicare. And whenever I talk to somebody about Medicare, they always think it's Medicaid. You know, that's the very first thing, or they think Medicare and Medicaid are the same. Uh, can you clarify those? Well, of course, yeah. Uh, of course, Medicare is a federal program okay. that is tied to your Social Security benefits, okay? And, of course, Medicaid is a state-funded program, uh, more like an assistance type, a need right. basis program. Okay. And it's based like on income level. And income level, and right. And it's for, for, and that's not age based. It's, it's more income level because they have like even the CHIP program or the. Well, it could be, it could be both. Right. Okay. Uh, because uh, one way, there's several ways that you can actually qualify for Medicaid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a state program administered by the state. Uh, but we do have one venue that we actually do work with with the Social Security okay. Administration. If we qualify an individual for Supplemental Security Income, SSI, either because they're over 65 years of age or because we have determined that they are disabled, unable to work because of a, a medical condition, right. if the, the minute they qualify for Supplemental Security Income, we qualify them qualify them for the Medicaid program. Oh, wow. I did not uh, know that. And, wow. of course, we just qualify them. We don't administer the program because it's a state program. Sure. So, so, so and, and Medicare is, is age-based, right? And it's tied to your Social Security benefits, correct? Could be age-based, okay. okay? Typically, uh, typically Medicare is known to, to be for individuals that are 65 years of age. But then we also have individuals that became disabled, unable to work because of a medical condition, at any age, and if, as long as they are on the program for more than two years, then on the 25th month of their disability, they become eligible for Medicare wow. benefits. Okay. And then we have your individuals that have worked at least 10 years and they suffer from chronic renal disease. They have to go to dialysis. Regardless of their age, they're also eligible wow. for Medicare I benefits. Did not know. Wow. So, so, you know, there's there could be some individuals, and there's probably quite a few individuals that that are still working, and um, they might already have been the retirement age, and but they have health coverage to their employer, so they wouldn't be eligible for Medicare yet, correct? As long as they're 65 years of age. But but if they want to keep the coverage with your employer, they have an they have an option. Okay, okay. if they're 65 years of age, and we we see this more frequent than we used to in years right. back. If you're 65 years of age and you're still actively employed, you have the option to file for for Part A hospitalization Medicare because that's free, premium free. Okay. Because during the time that you were working, you paid 7.65% into the program, which covers, uh, of course, part of the hospitalization under Medicare. Okay. So at 65, the hospitalization is free, premium free. Uh, Part B Medicare, of course, being the, the medical part, the one that actually covers doctor's uh, services, outpatient uh, treatment, lab work, that one has a premium. Okay. And this is where the advantage of being 65 years of age, still working, covered through your employer group health plan, you have the option to say no to Part B Medicare continue with your employer group health plan, and then when you retire, then you go back to Social Security and say, okay, I'm retired. Now I want to go ahead and sign up for the second part of Medicare, which okay. is the doctor's part. Or do you have to sign up for Part A? Part A, you don't have to, okay? okay. Because it's premium free. It's your option. Right. It's your option. It's your option. And we typically and, tell... And so, so let's say we have an individual, you know, um, for example, I have a relative who is working full time uh -huh. and, and uh, has full coverage with her employer, uh -huh. and but she she is collecting Social Security, but it hasn't signed up for Medicare. 
because she has full coverage mm -hmm. through her employer. Well, she has, if she's already receiving Social Security benefits, then she has, she had to sign up for Part okay. A hospitalization. Oh, wow. There was okay. no option. Okay? There was no option. Because once you sign up for Social Security and you're 65 years old. But she's probably age, not even using it because she she's probably would use the employer's health plan. Well, you would have to use both of them because your employer is going to say, okay, now you're eligible for part of Medicare. Uh, we're going to pay, as long as they're working, sure. uh, the employer insurance is primary and Medicare hospitalization would be secondary. Well, I guess we've never crossed that road because she, she hasn't been hospitalized, you know, <laughs> knock on wood. So I guess I, so I guess we've never have determined that. So interesting. But, but in wow. her situation, okay, because she's still actively employed, don't know if she took advantage of the option to say no to the medical part of Medicare uh, and postponed the premium that she would have right. to normally no, pay she for did. the Yeah, okay. she did on that. So when she turns, when she actually decides to retire, uh, uh, Medicare will give her an, a special enrollment period of eight months right? so that she can actually sign up for Part yeah. D Medicare. Which in, in this situation might be never, so <laughs> <laughs> knowing her, <laughs> well, you she, know, which she, is good. She's still very actively, you know, uh, and and very actively involved in everything and right which is good uh, of course uh, if before she retires she feels that now she needs to sign up for Part B Medicare because health, her health has to deteriorate right then she can also option to go ahead and take okay. it right then oh, and even though she's not retired so so par Part A is hospitalization right Part B is is for the other medical costs like you said. Uh, doctor's visits, you know, lab work and whatever. Outpatient, outpatient. medical equipment. Uh, what yeah. other parts are there? Uh, then you have Part C Medicare, okay? okay so <laughs> when you turn 65 years of age and you contact the Social Security office or you go to the Social Security website and, see, and you sign up for Medicare, uh, Social Security is going to sign you up to the traditional Medicare program. Okay. Which, uh, which means that when you get your Medicare package, you're going to get that famous red uh, right. wallet card with a red stripe, blue right. stripe, okay? With a traditional program, you can go to any doctor or hospital of your choice throughout the entire United right. States, okay? As long as they accept Medicare. Sure. And then we have the Medicare Advantage programs, which is Part C of Medicare. Oh, that's Part C. Part C. And th those act more like what, PPOs? Or? PPO, right. HMO, it's a network of doctors, a network of hospitals. And there's about six or seven different plans in El Paso County. Right. Okay. And you always see those pop up during the enrollment period, right? Isn't it that traditional or? Uh, well, what happens, okay, in, in a couple of months before you turn 65 years of age, right. Part C Medicare is actually uh, run or administered by the insurance companies, right. okay? So before you turn 65 years of age, I can assure you that you're going to receive all kinds of correspondence through the mail. And, and free from breakfast and free dinners to, for them to discuss. <laughs> well, the <plans>. community <laughs> outreach <laughs> yes, from that. those insurances. <laughs> and you get calls all, all hours of the right. night, okay? And, and I can attest to that because I'm going to be 65 years of age and I'm already being bombarded <laughs> by all kinds of... But what happens is that, okay, so it's a HMO, PPO version right. of Medicare. The premium that you already pay for the medical part of Medicare... Uh, which is the traditional that buys you into the okay. Medicare Advantage programs. You and, don't have to and, pay and, any and, more. And okay? that's and that's also why you know they have zero premiums usually, or sometimes very low premiums. It could well they, there's no such thing as zero premiums okay. because you already you're, you're pay, paying. You're already but, but in, paying. Yeah. If but you're, you're receiving, seeing that you're not paying. Yeah. <laughs> if you're receiving Social Security, that's being deducted from right. your Social Security payments. If you're still, uh, if you're not receiving Social Security because you work for another entity that doesn't right. pay the Social Security, then Medicare is billing you on a quarterly basis. So the difference between the traditional and the Medicare Advantage plans wow. is that, of course, some of the networks and group of doctors and hospitals uh, require that you stay within the group. Sure. Within the network. Or if, if your doctor drops out of that network then you might have to find somebody else, right? Precisely. Right. But some of, the, some of the networks do allow you to go outside and see your own doctors, right. okay? So you have to do a lot of homework, a lot of research to see which one of the adventures sure. plans that you and, and, you know, I think that's also because I think when you're in that network, I think to go to a specialist, you probably have to be referred, where if you have the traditional plan, you don't. Probably, okay? Yeah. That, that this is something the Medicare would actually, or the Adventist plan would actually have to Right. talk to with the patient regarding that, okay? Uh, but, but let me t uh, point out a couple of differences between the traditional program and right. the Medicare Advantage plans, okay? Um, the traditional doesn't cover eyewear, doesn't cover hearing aids, doesn't cover dental work, 
okay. where some of the Medicare Advantage plans do cover that. Okay. And uh, also the co-pays, the out-of-pocket, under the traditional, they're a little bit higher as right. compared to what they could possibly be under the Medicare Advantage plans. Right. So they have to, you have to. The, the individual really has to research mm -hmm. a little bit and be educated on, on these two. Before they make a, right. a move from the traditional to the advantage so or from the advantage to the traditional. Okay, yes. so, so then when I have a traditional, then uh, since it doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm still responsible for what, 20%, is that correct? Right. Medicare pays 80% right. and you pay 20% out of pocket. And that's where uh, the Medicare supplements come in, right? Medicare supplements, it, uh, yeah. If you want to get that. If, you don't which, ha if, if all you have is Medicare, then you should actually look for a supplemental right. plan. To because actually, 20% of a medical bill. Yeah. <laughs> could be outrageous, okay? It'd be fine if you saw one doctor and only one doctor throughout right. your lifetime. But you and I know that uh, when you go to a primary physician, they're going to refer you to specialists. Right. And those 20% keep adding on and adding on. Yes. Okay? So this is where Medicare actually comes in and says, okay, so if you already have Medicare and you have an employer group health plan or you bought a supplemental plan on your own, you already have practically 100% coverage. 100% coverage, yeah. But if Medicare is the only thing that you have, you're probably a good candidate to switch from the traditional program to the Medicare, to the Medicare Advantage, Advantage wow. plans, okay? okay? But you do have yeah, to because, do a lot um, of research. You know, um, um, for example, my parents have the, the traditional Medicare and the Medicare supplement, and they're, they're basically out of pocket for nothing right? because yeah. it covers everything. But, of course, they do have to pay those premiums. Of course. You know, and they can range. You know? Yeah, the premiums <laughs> depending on the plan that you actually right. selected. And this is where you have to do you know, shop around and actually make sure that you get the, the, the best coverage for the less price. Because, right. of course, Medicare, your Medicare is covering 80%. And you're only sh looking for something that is going to cover, cover 20%. 20%. And it's not going to be very costly, okay? Right. So this is why when you turn 65 years of age and you're going to carry your employer insurance into your retirement, if you're paying outrageous premiums for your employer sure. coverage and Medicare is already covering 20% and, and, and your employer insurance is only going to cover 20%, uh, you don't want to pay That's not a good financial hundreds decision, and hundreds yeah. of dollars for 20% coverage. Right, and, and, and so, so what are these, these other plans that I see like every year come up, you know, like during an enrollment period? Is that for Medicare Part D? That's, that's Medicare Part C still. Oh, Medicare Part, Part C. C. Oh, wow. Now, Medicare Part D is the prescription so, so, program. So that, that can be open enrollment every year? Uh, Part C? Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, the open enrollment starts October the 15th through December the right. 7th. Yeah, that's, those are the oh. ones that I see coming yeah. up. So that's when you can actually subscribe to a prescription plan or, or switch from the traditional to the wow. Medicare Advantage okay. plans. All right. Well, we'll continue discussing more about all these Medicare parts, and hopefully uh, you're getting all the uh, A, B, Cs, and Ds correct in your mind on the second half of Making Sense. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the second half of Making Sense, and we're trying to make sense of all these uh, Medicare parts, and I think we got through the first three letters, A, B, and C. <laughs> so, so now let's talk about Medicare Part D, and that's, that, that hasn't been in existence too long. Well, you know, how many years? Like? Well, it actually, le uh, uh, legislation introduced it in 2003, became yes. effective in 2006. Right, and, and so, so what is that? Well, the prescription plan actually, uh, Medicare, of course, uh, never had prescription right. coverage. So that I introduced the prescription coverage through the Medicare, for the Medicare beneficiaries, okay? Uh, and, of course, there's a lot of confusion because of the fact that individuals are usually uh, uh, accustomed to applying for Medicare A and B, hospital and medical, through, through Social, Social Security. Security. Unfortunately, when they introduced the prescription plan, and the only entity or organization can actually help you is Medicare. And unfortunately, they don't have a Medicare right. representative or office uh, in every community. So the only way they can do business with Medicare is through the 800 number or through the website. Okay. 
So, so, so part D, so it covers prescriptions, mm -hmm. not all. Not all, like <laughs> any <laughs> other prescription plan. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, that was introduced because, uh, of course, one of the biggest expenses are prescription drugs, especially as you get older, the maintenance drugs that, that you have to be on. Um, but, like you said, you can't get it through Social, through security. Social Security, even though it's called Medicare right. Part D, you have to get it through an insurance company, right? Well, you have to. You, well, it, it is an insurance company, right? Okay, but you, the only way that you can actually subscribe to it is actually through Medicare, right? Uh, again, through the 800 number or the website. And this is another difference between the traditional Medicare program and the Medicare Advantage plans. Is that under the traditional program you have to buy the prescription plan and right. it's a separate premium altogether. That's, that's exactly but some right. of the Advantage plans already cover the prescription cover program, which at no cost because you're already paying the the premium for the medical part of it. And and so so then why wouldn't everybody go through Medicare Advantage if it offers more? Or does it offer less? <laughs> well, it depends. Is, okay. is it like you have like different levels, like uh, maybe um, Medicare Part B, the standard with a supplement and a separate prescription plan, you might get covered more than. Well, keep in mind if you already have under the traditional program, right. if you already have an employer group health plan, which we talked about, and it has a prescription plan. Uh, you can stay with that prescription plan. You don't have to sign up for a prescription plan under the traditional program. Okay. Because Medicare does say that if you already have a medical plan that covers prescription coverage and it is, it is as good as or better than what Medicare offers, in other words, equitable coverage, uh, Medicare will allow you to stay with your prescription program. And if for some reason in the future you drop the prescription plan or your employer drops the prescription program from the medical plan, then they will give you a special enrollment period of 60 days to switch over to the wow. Medicare prescription without any penalties for late enrollment. Okay. And, and so, so these uh, Part D plans, who, who administers them? And Different insurance companies, okay? Too many. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's about, there's about 23 different prescription plans, right. okay? And this is where individuals are, are having a hard time because uh, you mentioned earlier they don't cover all prescriptions. Right. So this is why in, in, in selecting a prescription plan, they have to look at the prescription formulary. What prescriptions do they and cover? And which prescriptions are you taking? Uh, which early that, so you get a list. The more you, you get a list of your prescriptions. Look at each plan's formulary, and then once you select the plan, find the plan that covers your prescriptions, then you do the cost analysis. Wow. And because premiums can be anywhere from seventeen dollars to one hundred and thirty dollars right. a month, okay. And this is where Social Security actually comes in because we have a uh, program that we call Extra Help. And this is a program for individuals that are on Medicare, they're limited in resources, limited in income, and they cannot afford to pay the prescription plan costs, uh, depending on the level of your income, right. which could be wages, retirements, or Social Security. Uh, we can actually help you with as much as 100% of the plan cost or as little as 25% of the plan cost. Let, let me ask you this. Why, why is getting old so complicated? It's like we <laughs> so have to expensive. Go, and it's so complicated so and so expensive. We have to go through through all this education, you know, to be right. able to make the right choices. It's <laughs> well, it's always been like that, uh -huh. okay? So. Uh. And, and let, let, um, so, so, you know, one, one of the things we were talking about is, is this open enrollment. Right. And I, I didn't realize that you could go from the traditional Medicare to a Medicare Advantage Plus, or you could switch back. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, during October through December, uh, if you're on the traditional, you can switch to the tra uh, Medicare Advantage. If you're from the Medicare, you can switch over to the right to the the traditional. Okay. Oh, wow. So every year, you know, I, I, did, I didn't know that that you could switch back and forth. That once you made a choice, you, you had, had to, to stay, stay with it. No, no, you can you can go back and forth. Uh, also, wha what Medicare actually highly recommends is that even though you're on a plan, uh, whether it be a prescription plan or traditional versus Medicare Advantage. Every year, uh, look at the new plans because your plan uh, could have increased the, the prices sure. or dropped uh, prescriptions from their program. Uh, 
Uh, but of course, they have to give you a, a, a heads up. They have to send you a notice where sure. how much the plan is going to change and in what way is it well, going to change. I think all of them go up every year anyway. Right. So, <laughs> so, so it's recommendable that they actually review all the plans every year to see if it's to their advantage to switch another Review plan. all 23 of them? All, three, all 23 again. <laughs> or as many because they they do fluctuate the number of plans that I, are I didn't want to want to spend my... my, my later years trying to review all this this information it's like wow <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's why you have kids for so they can review it for you right definitely, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, what i do definitely. with my parents you know it's like okay well let me take a look at it and let me see what, well a lot of, a lot of times you get so comfortable you. with what you have yeah, and they don't, that you don't realize that you may be paying too much right. for, for and, the and the then coverage. also i think as as you get older you get set in your ways and no le muevas. Yeah. Don't move it. You know, Which leave it alone. Which is traditional. <laughs> Which is traditional. Yeah. So are they? Are there any more Medicare parts? Or is no, they're just <laughs> yeah, just A, B, and C, and D. So okay. they're not going to come with come out with anything else. Uh, in the future, I don't know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so so now let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about Social Security, and let's let's touch base on some of the changes. Okay. You know, I I've noticed that that um, this year they they uh, raised the wage limit of what can be tax taxable for social security earnings from I think um, 118 500 uh, which stayed for two years right uh, I think yeah because yeah. there was no cost right of before. and then to 120 127,200 that's quite a bit of a jump uh, yeah it Why? is Why? it is <laughs> well of course uh, the, depending on the on the economy the, uh, that's that's what determines the, the consumer price index so okay. right. Uh, determines how much is going to change and all that. Of course, that's for the Social Security portion that you pay taxes for Social Security. Right. But uh, for the Medicare portion, okay. It's unlimited. Uh, it's unlimited. Yeah. Whatever you earn, it's going to be subject to, right. to paying the Medicare uh, Yeah, and I think a lot, a lot of people don't understand, especially with, with high-income individuals. So let's say that we have an individual who's earning 250000 a year, the max they'll pay into Social Security taxes will be the limit, which is 127500 So yeah. anything above that is not taxed for Social Security, but it's unlimited for Medicare. For Medicare right. purposes, right. 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 So, uh, and I think that's a, a, a misconception that a lot of people don't have, or, or we probably don't make that much money then right. that we run well, into yeah. that, or, or, or you into probably that don't situation. Even, or you probably don't pay attention to to, to, to your check stuff to see how much you're paying. Okay. So so what other changes do we have? And and you were you were discussing that that they might remove the limit. Well, there's conversation. There's conversation. There's talk out there uh, because of the fact that, uh, and it's a well known fact that they're 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 looking at and how to actually uh, make changes to the Social Security program to assure that the Social Security trust funds are going to be equitable for all generations to right. come. Uh, right now, we can actually assure, based on the, re the report by the Board of Trustees, uh, we can guarantee 100% of all the Social Security benefits up to the year 2034. Right. Beyond that, if the legislators were not to do anything, uh, the most that we can actually guarantee is 79 cents to the dollar. Right. And, and we are paying Social Security benefits to over 60 million individuals wow. uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, so there's conversations about uh, raising, removing the cap, uh, changing the age that one is eligible to start collecting the Social Security benefits to 60, from 62 to maybe 63. Right. There's even conversation. Uh, Raising the retirement age, right? The, the full retirement the age. The full retirement age is already 66 Six. or 67, depending right. on what year you were born. For the younger generation. I've heard they've uh, been trying to go to 70, right? 70 <laughs> years for the younger, younger generation. And then the Medicare age from 65 to maybe 66 years of age. Wow. But of course, that's just conversation. Right. Uh, Social Security, we still don't know what's going to happen. Okay. So. So, 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 what are some of the things that have happened this year? Uh, this year, of course, the, 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 they removed, they raised the, 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 the cap limit. on the on the limit. Uh, if you're lacking orders of coverage, because of course you you understand that you have to have 10 years in order to qualify for Social Security okay. benefits. Uh, 10 years re, uh, translates into 40 credits, 40 quarters of coverage. Okay. So the dollar amount for every quarter. Uh, changed from one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars last year to a thousand three hundred dollars. Okay. So, in order for you to actually uh, 
uh, accumulate the maximum four quarters for the year, you would actually have to work and earn as much as $5,200 a year, a year, which are subject to Social Security, and you would actually lock in the four credits towards the 40 oh, wow. that you would need to qualify for Social Security. Now, of course, if you're talking about um, domestic employment, okay, uh, housekeeping uh, or gardening, okay, right. um, the 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 uh, amount for for a quarter is is uh, at two thousand dollars, so it's going to take a little bit more a for individuals longer, to actually yes, right. earn their four quarters. And this is where a lot of people make uh, an error. Okay, um, if you're working as a domestic, of not reporting the income, or, or maybe or maybe one is, uh, as as a household, or or, uh, or the one who's hiring them. Well, right. that, <laughs> it works both ways. Yeah. Okay. Because if you're a household employer, a lot of household employers don't realize that if you hire somebody you're and you're paying more than two thousand dollars a year, to employee taxes. You're, you're subject to employer taxes. And we have had a lot of uh, individuals that work as domestics, and they go claim their social security benefits, and the, they don't have the necessary credits. Right. If they can actually prove to us that they work for an employer and they earn so much per year we can actually go after the employer and they have to pay back taxes and then we refer the information to internal revenue and on top of the taxes they're going to pay the penalties yes yeah, so then you're going to open up a can of worms yeah <laughs> right. and then we and then we have the the individual himself or herself that work for that particular household employer and they figured well they didn't deduct social security taxes from my wages so i'm going to do it on my own as self-employed individual and this is where they make a big mistake because they cannot wow. they cannot pay their own social security the only way that an individual you, you have to be in business for or either self-employed yeah. right yeah. because if they go to social security and we know that they actually paid their own taxes and they ha did not have a business we're going to remove those earnings wow. from from the record and they're not going to get anything and and let's talk about you know one one of the ways of, of uh, preventing or monitoring identity theft is is uh, um, the the online website that you have and and we've talked about how reluctant people are to go on to that website you want to give us the address yeah uh, you, you you should uh, whether you're receiving social security benefits or not receiving right. social security benefits as long as you're over 18 years of age you have a domestic address, an email address, and a social security number, you should create your My Social Security account. Okay. So you go to socialsecurity.gov, okay. GOV, and make sure yeah, you go GOV, to GOV. Yeah, gov.com or whatever A lot of people else, right? go to uh, uh, sites that actually mimic social security. Right, and that's, that's and, also and potential identity theft. Right, and they wind up paying monies right. for services that we offer free, right. okay? So once you create your user account, okay, this is one way that you can actually start monitoring your social security record. Yeah, because it, it reports your wages on a yearly basis, and if you see that that's out of whack, or you didn't earn that much, somebody could be using your social security number. For one, you have to actually monitor your record for accuracy. Make sure that all your earnings right, are being, reported, being reported, because this is how we determine how much you receive from social security. Uh, whether you re receive retirement, disability, or maybe survivors in the event of your death. Two, identity theft. Right. That's not going to go, as a matter of fact, it's going by numbers. Right. And it, once you create your, your user account, you pull your record on a yearly basis, at least once a year, uh, monitor your record by comparing your wage statements to what Social Security sure. has reported for you. And if you see any inconsistencies, if Social Security shows or reflects higher wages, that means that somebody has already compromised. And, and what do you do? Do you contact the Social Security? You contact the Social Security office right away. We will actually sit down with you and review your record so that you can actually claim and disclaim your employers. Right. And those employers that you disclaim, then we're going to open an investigation and we're going to actually pursue the other wow. individual. And, and not only that, it might you might have to go through other agencies too and do the same thing because I don't think you all communicate with each other. For first and foremost, <laughs> first and foremost, of course, you have to go through the Federal Trade Commission. Right. Okay? okay. And then, of course, you also want to contact, contact your local IRS and, IRS and right. your local uh, police department. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, time really flew by, and thank you for educating us on all the uh, the letters of, of Medicare and the updates on Social Security. and. 
thank you for helping the college so much with all these events and all these TV programs. And Ray, known you for quite a while, and, and thank you for coming by and doing another show. Thank you, and congratulations oh, on your 50th. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll get to share some cake from the last show where it was my 50th show, so this is my 51st show. Yay! <laughs> we'll see you next time on another episode of Making Sense. Goodbye.